You have come seeking perfection. What stands here is perfection. More perfect than a diamond. As you step into the black gulf of perfect darkness, which holds everything and nothing alike, you are handed a coin to pay your way. A leaden coin. Or is it gold? You turn it over in your hand. And it changes from one form unto another. The formulas elaborate, perfect. And then you see that none of it will matter. There is no perfect here. For here is transitory, beyond, through that veil, that is where perfection lies. You pass the coin through the veil, lead to gold, gold to lead. What other transmutations may occur in that space beyond? Do you dare to look? to glimpse beyond that shadowed veil. If you do, then perhaps you are born for the path morose. Alchemists and necromancers both dwell in this land of stillness. The steady flow of the river Styx guides your hand. In its waters is your death. How you paddle is your choice. Will you sink below the waves and join your kin? Sink below the waves. Sink below the waves, sink below the waves, sink below the waves. Nearly all Moros awakenings involve death, the great capstone that makes life worth living. Be it one's own death or the death of those around you, the experience is always memorable. Traveling to the world beyond, to the halls of the dead, is a breaking point. And when a mortal breaks upon that edge, they find themselves awakened to the true nature of reality. Death is permanent, but it is not the end. There is another world, different, unknowable by definition. That is the realm of Stygia. After the traumatic moment in their life, a Moros mage enters Stygia, where they find a tower of bone, or some other metaphor, by adding their own bone, blood, or name to this monument. The awakened find themselves its master. When they return to the world of the living, they do so changed. And in turn, they can change the world. Some respect death, having seen its true face. Others spit in that face and swear to conquer death in all its forms. Many alchemists attain wealth and a wealth of knowledge on arcane subjects. Hungry for power in this world, they change what they can while here, and prepare for the voyage beyond. It is said that some have peered too far over the edge. Those on the path of Moros may find themselves with more in common with a ghost than another living man. Some are morbidly stoic, 
while others are seen as having an inappropriate sense of humor. Not all on the path of Moros are socially inept. In fact, some, having seen so clearly the boundaries of life, know how others fear and respect those boundaries. Historical Moros mages have been the likes of Rasputin, Kanada, and Mary Shelley. There are many paths to death, and so there are many ways to the realm of the dead. A Moros mage may hold the hand of a dying loved one before seeing the vision of where they are headed. They may be the sole survivor of a freak accident or a soldier grievously wounded on the field of battle. As with all paths, Moros mages can master any arcanum, but are most proficient in death and matter. At character creation, a Moros mage always starts with a dot in death and a dot in matter magic. Their inferior arcanum, which they struggle to understand, is spirit. The ghostly echoes of what has been make sense, but the still living forms invisible to the eye that persist through story and thought are alien to those who know a world where thought does not exist. Moros draw their power through tools made of lead, bone, and precious materials such as gems. They can gain sympathy with an object by burying it in the earth particularly in a graveyard. The tarot card associated with the path of Moros is, of course, death. And anything that has been touched by death will have a stronger resonance to a Moros mage. In the comments below, reflect on how you would use death and matter magic to change your world. How? would you be transformed?